Dr. Carl injected snake genes into his assistant Tim's body, hoping to alter Tim's original genetics. Unaware, Tim thought it was some kind of vaccine. Afterward, Tim's body began to change slowly. First, he shed his skin like a snake, then scales started to grow on his body, until he eventually turned into a terrifying hybrid of human and snake. However, Carl was not satisfied because his ultimate goal was to turn humans entirely into snakes. This failed experiment was then sold off to a circus for a pittance, attracting countless spectators to come and watch. No one knew that this monster was not just wearing a costume. Tim is forced to become the circus owner's moneymaker when he tries to call for help but can't speak. Meanwhile, Carl began looking for his next target. He comes to the school under the pretext of recruiting an assistant and finds his old friend Ken, who wants him to recommend a student for him. Ken was a bit puzzled, because as far as he knew Carl already had an assistant, why suddenly want to change an assistant, but Carl lied that the other party has resigned. After hearing this, Ken didn't think much of it and recommended his student David. David, already interested in biology, was eager to help and excitedly followed Carl home after school. Seeing Carl's beautiful daughter, Christina, made David even more happy to be Carl's assistant. Little did he know that this would be the most regrettable decision he would ever make. Carl then took David to his lab and introduced him in detail to his research. Carl's main study was on snakes. To differentiate the level of danger among them, he labeled each snake's box with a color-coded tag. Green meant non-venomous, yellow indicated venomous, and red was for highly venomous. However, most venomous snakes had corresponding antivenoms. As long as the antivenom was injected promptly after a bite, life could be saved. After explaining, Carl took out a black mamba from Africa to teach David how to extract its venom. The black mamba's venom was extremely deadly, one drop could kill 10 adults. Being the fastest snake in the world, a bite from a black mamba without antivenom would lead to death within an hour, with symptoms resembling a heart attack. After hearing Carl's explanation, David was not scared but eager to start working immediately. But Carl said that before starting work, it was necessary to inject an anti-snake venom vaccine, which, along with the antivenom, would guarantee no accidents. Without much thought, David went through with the injection, unaware that he had unknowingly become Carl's experiment subject. The vaccine David was injected with was actually a gene potion developed by Carl using the King Cobra. Carl also took the opportunity to introduce the King Cobra to David. The King Cobra is considered one of the most dangerous creatures in the world, even more venomous than the Black Mamba, with bites so fatal that there's no time for antivenom injection. But even a creature as dangerous as this has its natural enemy, the well-known mongoose. Later, while eating, the drug Carl injected into David began to take effect, making David feel dizzy and unwell but Carl falsely claimed it was a normal reaction to the vaccine. Then, with Carl and Christina's help, David was assisted to bed. During his sleep, David felt unbearably hot and ended up sleeping till the next morning. Upon waking, David saw a crowd gathered outside. Carl was holding his regular snake charming performance, drawing the town's residents to watch. Carl's act for the day was to catch a king cobra by hand. Despite his extensive experience with snake charming, Carl was somewhat nervous facing the king cobra because one bite could be instantly fatal. Just as he was about to succeed, a man started taking photos, nearly causing Carl to be bitten by the king cobra. However, Carl still managed to complete the performance and successfully extracted the venom from the king cobra. The audience applauded the spectacular performance, and Carl received numerous tips. And that's how Carl earns funding for his research. Research. However, a few days later, David woke up to find his skin peeling off his face. He quickly sought Carl for an explanation. While treating David's skin, Carl said that shedding was a natural reaction to the vaccine and assured him the vaccine was working and not to worry. But David felt unusually cold, which Carl dismissed, suggesting he wear a jacket, unaware that he was becoming cold-blooded. Since Carl's former assistant Tim had disappeared, his family had chosen to call the police, so two police officers soon found their way to Carl's house and wanted to talk to him about the situation. Carl claimed Tim had resigned long ago and calmly showed the officers around his lab. Seeing Christina taming a python, the officers even helped carry the snake to the basement. After a brief inquiry and finding nothing amiss, the officers quickly left. No sooner had they gone than Carl returned to the lab to continue injecting David with the so-called vaccine, telling him this process would continue daily for a month. After a month, David would be fully involved in his research. While spending time with Christina, David develops feelings for her, and Christina falls in love with David. Apparently Christina didn't know what her father was doing to David. On an outing, they confirmed their relationship and playfully frolicked in the river. On their way home, they saw a circus performing and were intrigued by a monster show advertised by the circus owner, who claimed to have a real snake person. Christina was skeptical, thinking it was a hoax, while David, intrigued, 
paid two and a half dollars to enter. Although the monsters inside were obviously humans in disguise, the so-called snake person looked incredibly realistic, especially its snake-like eyes. David wanted to tell Christina but found her being harassed by Steve. Without a word, Steve intimidated David with a show of force and then kicked him out. After getting up, David didn't hesitate at all and immediately charged back at Steve. But the size difference was too great, and David was no match for Steve. Frustrated, David bit Steve on the neck, causing him pain and making him let go. The police arrived shortly after to break up the fight. But as soon as they got home, an unrelenting Steve followed, eyeing Christina's silhouette in the second floor bedroom with bad intentions. Climbing up the wall to the window, Steve was about to make his move on Christina. Unexpectedly, a python on the table instantly wrapped around Steve's arm, scaring him into falling from the second floor. Luckily, Steve wasn't seriously hurt, but the poor python was beaten to death by him. Carl and David arrived just in time to witness the scene. Steve, thinking this family was deranged, quickly fled the scene on his motorcycle. Christina was devastated by the death of the python, her most gentle pet. The next day, they cremated the python, and Carl secretly vowed to make Steve pay. Carl quietly went back to his lab, took out the deadly black mamba, and placed it in a bag. He waited until nightfall and drove out in his car. At this time, Steve was getting cozy with his girlfriend, Kitty, unaware of the impending danger. Soon Carl arrived at Steve's house, he just saw Kitty coming out of Steve's house. After Kitty drove away, Carl stealthily entered Steve's home, finding Steve in the shower. Carl decisively released the black mamba into the bathroom. Steve noticed something was off too late and was bitten on the foot by the black mamba. After struggling for a moment, Steve stopped moving altogether. Carl quickly retrieved the black mamba and left the scene with a smug look on his face. In the meantime, David and Christina had an intimate encounter behind Carl's back. Returning home, Carl saw the disarray of clothes and immediately knew what had happened. Carl went to Christina's room, openly scolding her. He didn't oppose her dating but disapproved of her being with David. Only he knew David's body was undergoing changes, fearing David might turn into something horrific. However, faced with Christina's questions, Carl hesitated and then chose to keep everything hidden. This led to an argument between them, but the next morning, David discovered more snake scales appearing on his arm, his body increasingly wrong. Christina, wanting to check on him, was stopped by Carl at the door. He lied that David was in the final stage of vaccine adaptation and must not be disturbed. In order to make the experiment go smoothly Carl also deliberately tricked Christina into driving to town to pick up a shipment of poisonous snakes from overseas. Christina didn't think much of it and drove away. Soon after Christina's departure, Carl gave David a potion to drink, claiming it would alleviate his symptoms. David, reluctant but fearing his condition worsening, chose to trust Carl. After drinking the potion, not only did David not improve, but he also felt unbearable abdominal pain as if his internal organs were being mixed together. David wanted to go to the hospital, but Carl, of course, wouldn't agree and forcibly injected him with another potion. Just then, the sound of a car outside startled Carl, afraid his secrets would be exposed. It turned out to be Ken who had come by. He was taking the day off to attend a student's funeral and decided to check on David en route. The student was Steve, who had been poisoned by Carl. Everyone thought Steve died of a heart attack, unaware that Carl was the murderer. Ken wanted to see David and leave but was refused entry by Carl with various excuses. Reluctantly, Ken decided to leave. However, not long after leaving, Ken felt something was amiss and decided to sneak back through the back mountain to investigate. Unbeknownst to Ken, his actions were witnessed by Carl, who had just returned to the lab. To prevent his plans from being exposed, Carl decided he had to silence Ken. He quietly took a weight and stealthily made his way outside. When Ken reached the lab window, he caught sight of David inside, who had already undergone a complete mutation. Before Ken could even express his shock, he was struck down from behind by Carl. Seeing this, David was terrified, but his mutation prevented him from escaping. Poor Ken is locked in the basement and chained up by Carl, and Ken threatens Carl with publicity for his sick research. But Carl had no desire to engage in further conversation with Ken. He turned around and left the basement, leaving the rest to the large python residing there. <laughs> By the time Carl returned, Ken had been completely swallowed by the python. On the other hand, Christina managed to get to the shipping department only to be told that Carl didn't have a delivery from overseas. Faced with her daughter's questions, 
Carl still claimed the parcel might not have arrived yet and asked her to wait a bit longer at the freight department. Hearing Christina's interest in snakes, the owner suggested she visit the circus to see the monster show, which featured a half-human, half-snake creature he claimed was the most realistic snake person he'd ever seen. Looking just like the real thing, persuaded by the owner's description, Christina decided to see for herself. But by the time Christina arrived, the circus had already closed, and the owner told her to come back the next day. However, not wanting her trip to be in vain, Christina sneakily slipped in while they were distracted. The moment she saw the snake person, she was utterly shocked, recognizing the individual as her father's former assistant, Tim. At that moment, Christina realized her father had been conducting human modification experiments all along, hiding it from her. Connecting her father's odd behavior and David's recent physical changes, Christina knew David had also fallen victim to her father's schemes. Before her boss catches up with her, Christina rushes to her home by car. Meanwhile, Steve's girlfriend, Kitty, went to the police to report her suspicion that Steve's death was not an accident. It turns out that Steve told Kitty what happened to him that night and that he killed a python, so Kitty suspected that Steve's death was related to Carl's family. At first, the police were skeptical, but then they received another call from Ken's family, reporting that Ken had not returned home after visiting Carl's house. All clues pointed to Carl prompting the police to suspect him and quickly drive to his place. At that moment, Carl was busy with his experiment, tying David to the lab table and injecting him with another potion, muttering strange things. Carl told David he should be grateful for his transformation, claiming he was becoming a new human, the greatest evolution in human history, capable of surviving any harsh environment. By then, David's ability to speak had completely degenerated, leaving him powerless to object. Then, as Carl watched in amazement, David completed his final transformation. Firstly, David's head slowly turned into a snake's head. Then his legs began to merge into a snake's tail. And finally David's entire body turned into a snake's body. Carl's goal was to create a new species. But unexpectedly, he turned David directly into a king cobra. To test David's combat abilities, Carl released another king cobra, preparing for a battle of the snake kings. But before the fight could start, Carl was accidentally bitten by the king cobra the venom quickly spreading throughout his body. Without anti-venom prepared, Carl died from the poison. Although he didn't get to see the King Snake battle, a more intense battle was about to take place in the lab. Seeing David, now turned into a King Cobra, slithering around, the mongoose couldn't contain its excitement and unexpectedly opened its cage. Charging straight at David, by the time Christina finally made it home, she was greeted by the cold corpse of her father. The King Cobra hadn't left and attempted to attack Christina, but the police arrived just in time, shooting the King Cobra dead, rushing to the lab. Thinking of David, Christina saw a mongoose attacking his neck, trying to kill him. Despite being transformed, David was still no match for the mongoose. And the story ends there. This movie was released in 1973. Due to the undeveloped state of computer effects at the time, all the venomous snakes used were real. It's impressive how dedicated the actors were back then, though the plot has many holes and the ending is quite rushed. Considering it's a sci-fi movie from over 50 years ago, its novel theme did cause quite a stir at the time.